So let's dive deeper into algebraic expressions so that we can become more fluent with them when they get real complicated. So let's start with this real world scenario. I don't have the entire thing written out, but basically we've got two chefs, Jill and Kyle. Jill gets paid $25 for her shift, plus she gets $10 an hour. And Kyle gets $18 basically for his shift to show up, but then he gets $14 an hour. We wanna figure out what the total amount is that the company needs to pay out for Jill and Kyle. So if we want the total, that tells us that we're gonna to need to add these expressions together. So we can think of this as one long addition problem, okay? But we can't, we're not solving, remember, we don't solve for the unknown unless there is an equi uh, equal si uh, sign, right? So right now we're just trying to simplify this. We're looking at the terms that we can put together. Remember that terms are the constants or the terms with the variable attached to a coefficient, or it could just be a var variable by itself. That would be an individual term. So let's look here and see which terms are alike. So step one, is we need to combine like terms. And actually, because we're dealing with expressions and not equations, this is really all we can do, is combine like terms and rewrite it in a more simple form. So what this is saying is this is just $25. This is $10 per hour. We don't know how many hours Jill has worked. So we cannot add these two together. This one is being multiplied times H, and this one is not. This term has an H, this one doesn't, which means we need to look here and look, over, look on this side. Can we do 25 plus 18? Yes, those are like terms. So we're using the commutative property we're rearranging the order, we're moving things around, that's the commutative property, to put our like terms next to each other, okay? <clears throat> so we add these together and we get 43. Now we're gonna look here. Is there a term that can be combined with 10H? So I'm looking for another term that also has an H. Yes, this one. So now I can add 10H plus 14H. And again, commutative property allows me to move those next to each other. And actually, well, we can leave that there. Okay, so now at this point, we know there's still gonna be H's. If we have 10 H's, I want you to think of it that way. If we have 10 H's, and now we're adding 14 H's, we now have 24 H's, 24 total hours, right? You have 10 hours plus 14 hours is 24 hours. So that's what that equals. Now, we can either write this out like this, or we can think of it just as, you know, sometimes there's a way, if you're looking at it, you're like, well, I know this and this go together, so I'm gonna add those and put my answer. What you want to do is, when you write your final answer, you wanna put the term with the variable first. So when the final answer is written, we're gonna start with 24H, then we're gonna put our positive 43. All of these terms are positive, so I don't have any negative symbols or subtraction in here. And this is how we combine like terms and write them together. Now, sometimes the problems are gonna look a bit more complex. We're gonna need to apply our rational number sense to our expressions. 
Well, if I look here, this is saying 3x plus 1 half plus 7x minus 4 and a half. Nothing has changed. There's actually no multiplication because there's no number against the parentheses, okay? This technically has a one in front of it, but you're not, if you multiply these times one, you're gonna end up with the same thing. It hasn't changed anything. So now I'm looking for like terms. I can think of this without the parentheses. I can just think of it as just like that. Nothing has changed. So I'm looking, I have a three X. I'm looking over here to see if I have another term with an X and I do. I'm gonna add those together and I'm gonna get 10x. Then I'm gonna take a half. This is my constant. Is there another constant? Yes, negative four and a half. When I add negative four and a half plus a half, it takes that away and gets me closer to zero, and now I'm just at negative four. That is my final answer. Notice that I'm putting a box or rectangle around the final answer. This is a must do. It helps keep organize, you organized and you'll always be able to see exactly what your final answer is very, very easily. Okay, <clears throat> let's do the next one. This one does have some multiplication happening. I can tell because I've got parentheses and then there's a number right up against it which tells me we need to multiply. So first thing we need to do is get rid of the parentheses. Okay, that's step one. So step one, Distribute, or we're gonna, I'll say this, distributive property, that's what we're gonna use to get rid of the parentheses. Remember, everything I write, you're writing in your book. Okay, so if you need to pause and continue when you're ready, that's okay. So, the five stays the same. The five is just a five, that's a constant. But then we have this negative three that we have to distribute to what's in the parentheses. Distributive property means multiply. So here I go, negative three times seven X. Well, negative three times seven is negative 21, but I can't forget the X. If I have um, seven, X, you know, I have seven, X's, now I'm multiplying that, so now I have negative 21 X's, okay? Negative three times eight is negative 24. Now, I'm looking to see if I can combine like terms, that's step two. Combine like terms. Here's five. This term has an X. This one doesn't, so I can put these together. Five minus 24 is negative 19. And then I just bring down my negative 21 X. So my final answer is negative 21 X and then minus 19, because that's how much was left. The five positives took up five of the negatives. All right, last one. Let's do one with fractions. So I see parentheses and I have a number right up against it with no, term, no um, operation symbol in between. So again, I'm doing step one. So I'm gonna put a check next to this. Actually, I need to do step one again where I distribute and get rid of the parentheses. This term stays the same. It's negative 9a, we're not doing anything with that yet. Then we have negative three and we're gonna distribute it to every term inside the parentheses. If those are grouped together, they're all being multiplied by the number outside of the parentheses. So we have negative one third, I'm gonna write this to the side, negative one third times negative three fourths, well, automatically, I know my answer is gonna be a positive because a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm gonna put that over here. Then I just multiply straight across. I, don't, I, I can cross divide, I can look a diagonally like we've learned before, but there's, no, um, there's nothing I can simplify. So I get three, 
one times three and then three times four, I get three twelfths. And I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I can simplify that later because that's actually one fourth, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Next one we're gonna do is negative one third times negative two thirds. Now I know this one has an A and I know that it's also gonna be positive. So I'm automatically gonna put my plus sign and I'm gonna put my A there too, so I don't forget it later. What I need to now know is what's the fraction. So again, I multiply straight across, I get two ninths, right? Because one times two is two, three times three is nine. Last one is negative one third times 12. Well, this one is a negative times a positive. So automatically my answer is gonna be negative. I know that. Let me separate this. Now I want a third of 12. Well, that's four, right? And we can see that if we multiply straight across, we get 12 thirds. So I'm just going to put that it's a four because that's what it is. Okay. Now, let's look at like terms, okay? Again, same steps as the last one. This term has an A attached to it. This one does also. So I'm gonna put these two together. There's no, these two don't have an A. So negative nine plus two ninths. Well, when we're adding and we don't have common denominators, we can rewrite them to have them. So we actually have negative nine A plus, we wanna make this a common denominator. So I'm thinking, how can I, actually, let me, I wanna do this one. Um, this would be negative 81 ninths, right? Cause that would give me negative nine. I'm rewriting this so that it has a denominator of nine. Basically, I have to multiply everything by nine because the denominator is a one. So I need it to be a nine multiplied by nine. Plus two ninths A. Well, this now gives me negative 79 ninths. I'm gonna put that below. And there's my A. Now, <clears throat> so I'm keeping my terms that have the A on the same side. I'm not, I'm not going all over the place. I'm staying structured here. Now we need to add 3 twelfths and negative 4. Again, I can think of this as, I'm just going to write it out, minus, if this is a 1 denominator and I need it to be a 12, I need to multiply this by um, 12, so I get 48 fourths. Okay, so again, this is negative four over one. I need it to be a 12. So I have to multiply the top and bottom by 12. That's where I got 48. So now I can do this. Three, whoops, I meant for that to be a 12. Now I can do, I know it's gonna be negative because there's more negatives than positives. And I know the denominator is 12. Now I just have to do three minus 48, and that's a negative 45. Okay, so we distributed and rewrote it without parentheses. Then we combined like terms. We had to do some work with getting common denominators because we were working with fractions and we were adding in or subtracting them. And then we got our final result, which is just two terms, negative 79 ninths A minus 45 twelfths. Um, so if you think about it, guys, this is really cool. We went from one, two, three, four, five terms, we went from five down to two by using the distributive property and combining like terms. Um, again, you can rewrite them close to each other if you want you know, right away or just rewrite the whole thing and switch it before you do the math, that's fine. It's an extra step, but whatever helps you stay organized and make sense of what you're doing is totally fine. So now you're gonna do some practice.